everyone, Kirk Kaiser here, and today we're going to be talking about the Geolab Rank 2, which just came out today, kind of discussing the ins and outs about the whole quest, and if it's worth doing. So first off, though, let's talk about how to access the quest. So you can either go to the original door in Ratem itself, or you can access it on the map by selecting the Trinitas icon here. And then as you can see, there is that rank two version, enemy level 65. So for the requirements of this quest, you need to be level 65 or higher for your main class that you have currently selected and have 2878 battle power. Do keep in mind though, that the enemies do scale to your player level. So if you are level 70, the enemies will be level 70. Once you have those two, you can press the start quest button, but this doesn't take you quite in it yet as you can apply challenge settings or modifiers to the quest itself to adjust the difficulty level. So there's ones that make it more difficult, like increasing the enemy HP, but there's also ones that can make it easier, like increasing your attack potency. But as you can see here, the ones that make it more difficult uh, increase your score multiplier, while the ones that make it easier reduce how much score that you're getting. And your score is important for this quest, as the more you have, the higher the rank, which means more rewards. But once you have all the challenges that you want selected, you can just press accept quest and that will take you in. Once it's signed, you'll be greeted by a ramp with a whole bunch of rest assigned or reverse assigned to kind of top off, and then a teleporter at the end. So activating this will actually get you inside to start facing the different floors and the different bosses slash enemies. But now for those of you who have played the rank one version of this quest, you'll notice a, a huge difference with just the entirety uh, from here on out. Uh, first off here, the timer is only 20 minutes instead of like, what, 40 minutes, which is double the time. So way shorter quest and also only three floors. And believe it or not, all of those floors are static. They're the same every time. They're not randomized like they were in the rank one version. And so because of that, I can actually talk about these floors in detail. The first one being a boss fight, Ikasa Bujin. This is the previous rank's final boss, this time just the first one. Uh, it's pretty much the same exact as last time, but for those of you who don't know about this one, it's just a modified Bujin boss, which has different uh, variations to its attacks. But the only one to really look out for is the one where it tries to throw out its like tentacle arm at you, because this one cannot be countered and can only be sidestepped or ran away from. And unfortunately, if you do get hit by this, you're stunned and you're pretty much dead. It does so much damage, even those with like high defenses or HP are most likely going to die. Once you kill it though, you'll get a replenishment of all your rest assign and reverse assign and a new teleporter to go to the next floor. But before we move on, there are these important objectives to look out for called side missions on each floor. So examples on the first one with Ikasa Bujin, there's clear without being incapacitated three times or guard or dodge five enemy attacks and clear. Just doing any of those gives you more score and they do multiply off your score multiplier. So more of those done equals better rewards at the end. But there's also a bonus that they did uh, recently where by completing all of the objectives on a single floor, you actually get a bonus which lasts the entire run. The first floor giving you 20% photon power. And good thing it does because the second floor, you're gonna have to deal with a whole bunch of mobs, wave after wave, and a boss at the end. Honestly though, with the enemies here, there's nothing too special. They're all normal, no special variants or Ikasa. But uh, there is a single side mission here that you want to kind of keep an eye on, and that is dive attacking. So this is a special attack that any class can do, either by pressing space and normal attack at the same time, or specifically putting the dive attack on your weapon palette or your sub palette. All you need to do with this though is accumulate 3000 damage against the enemies here, which is easy enough, but I just find myself forgetting that a lot of the times and just mistakenly missing that side mission. Once you finish off all the mobs and the Dark Lemnus boss up top, you'll be able to teleport to another area for a whole bunch of rest assigned or reverse assigned, which you can then teleport to the final floor. This is another boss fight, this time including a new variant of boss, the Ikusa and Goku. So this is a variation of the boss in the Steer region where it does a whole bunch of interesting things. First off, you might notice that it can duplicate itself or make an illusion somewhat uh, to do double the amount of attacks against you for certain moves in its moveset. This may seem bad, but pretty much just treat it as like a single attack anyways. It's more of just like an extension of its range, because if you do counter one, the other one cannot hit you. But then there's a couple of moves to look out for in specific that I think are bad. And that is first, once it enrages or turns red, it'll start 
exploding up into the sky and grow huge. Uh, once it does that, it'll start slamming on the ground and produce these bubbles, very similar to like the Dark Falls uh, R.2 fight uh, from a while back. But doing that, it's going to do it three times, once for each foot, and then it's going to do a big slam with both of them. And then at the end, there will be a fire pillar every time, so don't, like, relax. You gotta watch out for that, too. Uh, but there's also another move that it does while it is enraged as well, where it has this, like, rectangular kind of thing on the ground, like an aura that it's about to attack. This is where it can stun you, much like the Ikusa Bujin can, and... If you get stuck in that, you're pretty much dead. But this one's easier to dodge as it takes a longer windup uh, instead of the Ikusa Bujin. Once you get all that down, though, and kill this boss, you are done. And you get your score based off your multipliers, as well as how many side missions you do. And based off of the final rank slash score that you get, you get a number of different rewards. For the first time that you clear this, you get a guaranteed once per account single piece of Ajax armor, which is one of the best armors right now in the game, and then five Aegis Integra, which is usually only from Dark Falls Aegis Urgent Quest, but you get five of those, which means you can pick any Neos Astrian weapon that you may want, or you can just exchange this for different augments. And that can be done at any item trader in any city. But for the actual drops in the quest, there's actually quite a bit uh, here. So bring up the reward page, as you might be able to tell already, these rewards are way better than the rank one version. Starting off with the augments, you can get the stat uh, fours or threes, the dreadkeeper threes to fours, all the gigas capsules three to four, old secreta three and four, all of the different dominas, and then pretty much almost every soul four capsule in the game, except for Aegis four. But then for the equipment, there's the Neos Justitian series, Tenebris, Fulgent, Christia, whole bunch of options there the Ajax armor and all of the FTs and Ephidus armors. And then for the materials, you can sometimes get arms refiners to drop as well. But then for cosmetics, so there's a few options here. There's the accessories FBP-100 Annihilator and Annihilator B. These things are basically giant like robot eyes behind your head. Uh, I don't think they're like too great, but they do exist. But then for a weapon camo, there is the Neos Justitian Almaty. But there is actually another one that they don't mention here that I got to drop which is the Obsidia Almaty. Unfortunately, unlike the other items, this one is not tradable in the personal shop, so you need to get this to drop for yourself if you want to have this. There is another cosmetic that is guaranteed though, which is through a title. This is the exact same kind of one that you would see in the rank one version, where you need to get 200 million score, and then you can get a mag form, this time being the Blanc Cheval. And this is like a knight looking dude with like two swords, uh, one in each arm. It's kind of like a cool looking mag, honestly, but it's gonna take you a while to get that 200 million score, especially if you're doing lower score runs. But this is the only new title attached to this rank two version, but you can complete some previous titles, all of these marked of a seasoned X titles where you have to be a certain class and get up to 3.5 million score in a single run. This can be done in either rank one or rank two, and you get a whole bunch of different star gems and different title names. But there is one that's still attached just to the rank one version, and that is getting 50 million score, 200 million score for the rank one, where you get like special scratch tickets, as well as a different mag form, the Coccyx Machina, which is kind of like attached to your spine or your back. Now, before I end this here, though, I did want to give some strategies on how to tackle those different titles or try to get the best amount of rewards in the shortest amount of time. So if you're going for this Aegis Integra or this first clear reward, like you don't have your Neos Astrian yet, I would just go into this quest with all of the positive modifiers, like things that are going to boost you, giving you extra attack, critical rate. It doesn't really matter what your score is, just as long as you clear the quest itself. If you want the highest possible score, however, like you're trying to do in ARCs records, like trying to compete in a leaderboard, then this is what your setup should be. Enemy HP to 200%, attack to 300%, rest assigned consumption to level 5, and decreased carry limit to level 4. But if you don't care about all of that and just want fast runs but still want to S rank, then you can just lower this HP to 25% instead of 200% and you'll still be able to get that S rank as long as you do most of the side missions. Or as an alternative, if you want an easier run that's only going to be slightly longer than this, then you can up this back up to 200% 
However, put on a positive modifier where you lower the level of the enemies by 10 levels, which significantly lowers their attack and their defenses, but you still get that S rank. That is everything that I have for you guys today, though. Thanks for watching. Peace.